Hey everyone, today we are going to explore the Switch 3.0 update. So to prove I have it, go into system settings here. Go down to, it's somewhere down here. There it is. Under system, you'll see I currently have version 3.0. So let's go through some of the stuff they claim here. So first up, they say that under the news section, you can register specific games to get updates about those games. So we'll go into news here. And I'm actually going to mute this on my side so you don't get any feedback to the microphones. Okay. So it says, look, there's a little new right up there. So let's hit the plus sign, find channels. All right. And then here are the available channels to me, the new channels. So we're going to follow that channel and we will follow Super Mario Odyssey. Heck, you know what? Let's just follow all of them. All right. If I go back into find channels, you have the ability to remove. So that's where you would also remove what you're following. And obviously this is going to give you private, you know, core updates on those games. So like, you know, I got the arms update here with Biff, Super Mario Odyssey, yada, 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 Splatoon, etc. It's going to prioritize those news. So I get that news first and I get every update and I get little notifications when updates come in. All right. That's cool. Uh, the next thing it says is that you can add friends from your Nintendo 3DS and Wii U friends list. To add friends, you got to head to your my page at the top left of the home menu and go to friend suggestions. So let's see what's up here. Friend suggestions. All right, there it is. So you'll see I have suggestions here from my mobile device. Mostly looks like Miitomo, which is interesting. I've played more than Miitomo, but uh, apparently that's the only thing I have registered. Uh, let's move over to 3DS. I don't know if I connected my 3DS. I did not. See, I did not display connect my 3DS. And I don't think I connected my Wii U account either. Could be wrong. We'll see. Oh, okay. I do have some Wii U friends I could add. So. Again, kind of a quick way to add people. In fact, I'll, I will add, let's see, I know who you are, so I will send you a friend request. And I will send a friend request to Elijah. Because why not? And let's see here. Meg. Let's send a friend request to her. This is kind of cool, and I wonder if this pops up if they have their stuff connected. Um, let me just look at my Mitomo list. There might have been some people I want to add for Mitomo. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> sure, why not? Um. I don't remember who some of these people are. HMK, why not? Love, love a little HMK. Funny, I was friends with them on Mitomo, but I wasn't friends with them on Wii U. Always interesting to see who I'm friends with on here. Not seeing anyone else. Okay, so that's obviously how you would add friends from your mobile device. And you got to connect everything to your Nintendo account. Obviously, I don't have my 3DS currently connected through my Nintendo account. So any of my 3DS friends, which I don't really have that many, um, I wouldn't be able to add through this method. Um, it says you can receive notifications when your friends go offline. To turn this on and off, head to system settings, notifications, friend notifications. So let's go down to system settings. It says go to system settings, notifications. All right. And friend notifications. So select my user. So here you get you can have them on when users are online, notify when all friends. And if you go to this best friends only, you can go to none. If you want to get rid of those notifications, you can turn all that off. I'm going to leave that on. I like knowing when my friends come online. So that's kind of a cool addition. What else we got here? Find paired controllers within communication range by activating the vibration feature. So we have to go to controllers. Find controllers. And you see I only have my joy cons hooked up right now. And I have a pro controller and all the set. But here we go. Uh, so let's say I don't know where my left controller is. And I'm tapping on screen. What happens? Let's see if you can hear the buzz. Pretty cool, huh? And obviously, if you go to the other side. So that's kind of cool. Um, 
Not always going to be audible, but I know I found my phone several times when it had just vibration only. I know sound. So, hey, it's a way to find controllers you might have lost. Uh, obviously, you have to be within range, but that's pretty cool. Um, I am curious to see if it actually will turn on the controller um, if it's off. But, and obviously, if the batteries are dead. That's not going to help. Let me see. It says, change the user icon under the home menu. All right. So, it says... In order to change, head to system settings, users, oh, not data manager, users, aha, and then change order. This would let me, if I wanted to put, say, my girlfriend first, she would come first. Obviously, I'm going to keep it as me first, but that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So then you can change order of what, what pops up. So uh, if you don't want that to be your main account anymore, you know, maybe I want Yulia to be first, so it automatically selects Yulia. That would be sweet. Um, it says select from new six new Splatoon 2 characters for user icon. So let's go to... Uh, can I do that up here? I can't remember if I can do that up here. Profile. Yes. So it says that there are some new Splatoon ones. So let's see here. I have not actually looked at this since the day the game came out. I don't remember that the Master Sword and Shield being there as an example. I think that's new. I think this is new, too. Anyways, let's look at... Oh, yeah. So they added a bunch of Splatoon ones here. Uh, Splatoon 2 ones specifically are these ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there you go. There's a brief look at those. Looking pretty fly. Pretty sweet. We're going to keep it as my, my main boy Link for now. Might change it once Splatoon comes out. Do they have any arms, guys? I don't know. I do not think they have any arms. That's surprising that they don't have arms. Because that's the game that's out right now. But, all right, there's that. It says you can change the system volume from the quick settings. Access quick settings. Hold down the home button. So let me back out. Let me back out of my profile. Although it shouldn't matter if I just hold down the home. Okay, there we go. So, what's it say I'm supposed to be able to do from here? Um, change the system volume. Hmm. Hmm. Not seeing that. Let me go back to... I don't see a way to change that. Maybe I am lost. Or maybe it only works in portable mode, so then I can't actually show you guys. Because it says, to access quick settings, hold down the home button. So that's what I did. And that's the quick settings. It's just to put it in sleep mode. I do not see a way to adjust volume. Again, this could be something that's only available in portable, since that's when you would obviously use volume meter on the Switch itself. It says, lower the maximum volume for headphones or speakers connected to the audio jack. To lower the max volume, head to system settings, system, lower max. Okay. System settings. System. Let's see here. Okay, console sound. Aha. So you can mute when the headphones are disconnected if you don't want it to just blast you, or you can lower the maximum volume, headphone volume. So you set a maximum volume. <laughs> sure, you guys can see this is just my, ooh, that's not my pin. It's not this? Oh, man, I don't remember my pin. Anyways, that's where you go to that. I don't know why I sold the parental controls on. I, I should really go turn that off, <laughs> go through the app and take care of that. Um, apparently, I don't know my own pin to my system. That's not good. All right, so that's that's where you can mess with the headphone stuff. Um, the setting will be on when parental controls are enabled. Yeah, so I, to even turn it off, I have to get rid of parental controls. Uh, change display colors to invert or grayscale. So that's, again, under system setting, invert or grayscale. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go to invert. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't look too bad. A little pink slash red on uh, on white. Or some purple icons. That's not bad. Let's see what it looks like on the home menu. Oh, yeah. Puyu Can you imagine playing Puyu Puyu Tetris this way? How crazy the colors would be? Like, some of these almost look unplayable. Like, Binding of Isaac, it looks like it might just be too bright all around. But Puyu Puyu Tetris looks like it would be fun. Breath of the Wild looks like I it would be just not even viewable to me. And some people always ask, like, why would you want to invert colors? Personally, I wouldn't want to do it. 
but there are people who um, have certain deficiencies in their ability to see colors, and inverting them actually helps them see um, the game better. Same with grayscale. There are some people who are colorblind, as an example, and while they already see things kind of in a grayscale, sometimes they're not completely colorblind. They might be able to see like a little bit of blue. So if you just bump it down to a pure grayscale, it's actually easier for them to play games. Um, obviously, none of this applies to me, but it's nice to have the options in there for the people that need them. So we'll just go take care of that quick and put it back on. Oh, we're not initializing. Wait, am I in the right thing? Ah, there it is. To default. There we go. All right. Is there anything else you can do? Um, it says you can you you can now connect a USB keyboard to the dock. I I'm just gonna believe them on this because I only have one keyboard and that's what's currently hooked up to my computer. I'm not going to disconnect that just to see if it. Well, maybe I can. Hold on. I said that. Maybe let's give it a try. One second. All right, I just did what I said I wasn't going to do. Well, let's go somewhere where you have to type. Um, let's see. Let's say eShop. Let's go search for something. Searching for something on the eShop. Hmm, perfect example. I have to type. Let's see if the keyboard works. It does. And you guys can't see what I'm doing. That's pretty cool. Of course, that isn't my password. Oops. I want to actually select the area. I wonder if I even know my password, to be honest. I haven't been in the eShop in so long. Okay, well, either way, the keyboard clearly works. That's all I really wanted to display. Keyboard functionality is great. I just got to run to plug my keyboard back into my computer. Uh, what else do we got here? And that's also great um, if there's any games that want to make use of a keyboard. Being able to have that input is awesome. Uh, let's see here. Going through the list that Nintendo sent me. It says, use the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller via wired communication by connecting the USB charging cable. To enable, head to settings. Okay. So we'll go to settings here. It says, go to settings. Controller and sensors. Let's see here. Aha, if this option is enabled, the Switch Pro Controller will communicate with the console via wired communication when it's connected using the USB charging cable. The NFC touch point on the Pro Controller will be disabled while the controller is using a wired connection. That's interesting. So, what I don't understand here is why does that disable the NFC touch point? We're going to turn that on, but I I don't get that. I know there's going to be a lot of people that says, oh, I've been plugging my Pro Controller in this whole time and using it. Yes, you've been using it, but it hasn't been actually like physically. It's not been using a wired connection. It's just been charging your controller while you use it through a wireless connection. So what Nintendo is saying here is with this update now, it will be a true wired connection. But for some reason, they didn't set up the Pro Controller correctly, so a true wired connection does not include NFC TouchPoint, which, that kind of sucks. Um, but it is what it is. And then um, they said they... What else did they do? They update connected controllers to update. Head to system settings, controller sensors, update controllers. Okay, so let's see... Um, Okay, all my controls are up to date, but, but <coughs> sorry. So all my controllers are up to date, but that's that's really great because that means these controllers are programmable and updatable. So they can release updates that can improve things, um, like increasing the range on the NFC stuff. They can go into the settings and max that out and allow you to have longer ranges with your wireless connection. Um, kind of cool. Calibrate control sticks, all that stuff. All right. And what else does it say? It says, added a feature that suggests deletion of software data when insufficient space when downloading other software. 
Okay, so basically if you ran out of space on your Switch and you're downloading a new game, it will suggest a game that maybe you haven't played in a while that you should get rid of that will create space for the new game. And it is of note, save data is not deleted. So you're just deleting the game file, but you can always reinstall it and pick that game up right where you left off. Excellent news. Uh, it's not a perfect way to manage things. Obviously, you would just like more native storage, and you can buy SD cards. But if you don't have it, you're still not going to lose your save data. So that's that's what the important part. Um, they also did some general stability improvements, uh, including they resolved an issue that caused game software updates to fail and prevented the software from starting. I've actually seen that happen one time with Breath of the Wild. Uh, and improvements to prevent unintended HDMI input change with certain TVs while the console is docked in sleep mode. Again, I have not had this issue, but I know some people with certain TVs have had issues uh, where in sleep mode, suddenly the system would like wake up the TV. Um, sometimes it would even take screenshots on its own. It got really weird. So it's nice to see the Nintendo address to that issue, even though it doesn't impact me. Good times. Good, good times. Well, that's going to do it for... This, yeah, so that's a look at System Update 3.0. You can download it right now. I think it was available as of yesterday. I just wanted to give you guys a brief look at some of the features that you may or may not ever use, but uh, it's nice to have them pointed out because this is arguably the biggest update they have done to the operating system to date since launch. Anyways, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you disliked it, you also know what to do. Um, comment and subscribe for more content like this, and I will catch you in the next one.